movieweb.com. All right, Eli Roth, uh, welcome. Well, welcoming me here. A um, couple questions about the release of Hostel One Director's Cut and Hostel yeah. Two on Blu ray. Is it strange promoting the Blu ray so close to the initial release of Hostel Two in theaters? Uh, no, I mean, now the window between DVD and theatrical is getting shorter and shorter and shorter, so I'm actually used to promoting the DVD almost right after the movie comes out. And in a lot of cases, the theatrical release winds up almost in an odd way acting as a commercial for the DVD. So as the window gets smaller and smaller, I mean, eventually we're going to get to the point where we have day and date releases. Yeah. So you'll be talking about the DVD and the movie at the same time. So That's it's, it's not strange. Setting the standard, let's say, for the future upcoming yeah. releases here. I mean, look, I wish you could have your movie in theaters for years and years and years, yeah. but there's a lot of movies coming out. And, you know, the reality is that your movie does really live on DVD, and that's where a lot of fans will watch it over and over and over. So the, the DVD is, is essential. And whenever I'm even writing my scripts, I'm, you know, writing the film, I'm always thinking about stuff that I can shoot for the DVD. And, and really, once the script is done, right from the pre-production stage, when I'm planning the movie, I always plan lots of different features of the DVD to really make it as much of a kick-ass DVD as possible. Would you say that the horror genre especially lends itself well to the DVD releases the fans yeah. like to... Yeah, I think that there are certain genres where the fans are pretty die-hard. You know, it's like, it's certainly with the comic book genre, and, and horror fans, I think, are... I think horror fans are the most dedicated I out agree. of all the fans. I mean, they, they will buy every edition of something. I mean, I'm the same way. I'm like, oh, there's a seventh edition of The Evil Dead. you got to see it, because there's going to be that one extra scene yeah. that maybe someone discovered in a vault somewhere. Um, but, you know, and while I, I, I don't like to double dip and do multiple things, I mean, in, in the case of Hostel 1, when we made the first DVD, we didn't know what would happen with a film, and we didn't know what would happen with it theatrically, and so we had this other ending, and we had so much stuff in the DVD, we just physically didn't have room for it, and then when the film hit the way it did, we said, okay, we can do something really special and put all the deleted scenes, we, we had so much extra stuff. With Hostel Part 2, you know, the, the ending that was what was theatrical is that's my director's cut. I, I wanted to have you know more gore and more violence. So, Absolutely. You know, this, it's got all the stuff that the ratings board made me take out. That's in there. Um, but there's only going to be one edition of Hostel Part 2. And okay. we really just jam-packed that DVD with all the deleted scenes. Tons of awesome commentaries. A great commentary with Tarantino where he started telling stories of Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. Stuff that I had never heard before. It was, Very cool. It was pretty amazing. So Well, that basically answered yeah. my next question, which was, wh can you give me any specifics as far as the extra, the sick little extras in the uh, release of either one of them? Yeah. Is well, there anything, that Tarantino yeah, I mean, in, Well, in Hostel 1, you have the original ending that we showed to audiences and people were just genuinely shocked and disturbed. And it does not... Yeah. Apply it. Hostel Part Two will not apply. You can make a whole separate Hostel Two from yeah. the ending of the director's cut of Hostel One, um, but we have all these deleted scenes that were never seen before. And there's a whole international special that was done and photo gallery. I basically took every piece of you know material that I thought the fans would really love and just put it all, you know, jammed it onto that Hostel One special edition. For Hostel Part Two, it's the the gore. I mean, you, it's the castration is extra nasty and the bloodbath is extra bloody. I mean, those those are the scenes that really really. I had to pull back. I mean, there are other areas, a little violence sporadically throughout the movie, but the main thing is this is exactly how I wanted the bloodbath, and this is how I wanted to see that. Awesome. Situation. Awesome. Good to hear. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad. I'm going to ask you, tell me what you want about it. Uh, is there any progress on your work with Stephen King's Cell? Can you talk uh, about that at yeah, all? Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now, actually, I did this fake trailer for Grindhouse called Thanksgiving. I, and, yeah. yeah, I had so much fun doing that that I kind of <laughs> want to do a whole movie of fake trailers that I'm going to call Trailer Trash. So yeah. I'm actually writing that right now. Uh, the script for Cell is in development, and I'll probably do that after Trailer Trash. Is that something that you set your sights on long ago? Is this kind of come into your... Field really of vision came out of nowhere. I mean, I, that I, came I, out of the. Out of, out, yeah, I, I had added two days in November. It was actually uh, oddly after Thanksgiving when we shot yeah. this Thanksgiving weekend um, when I was in <laughs> Prague and we had just wrapped Hostel 2 and I added two shooting days. And so we just shot this trailer and it was so much fun yeah. shooting something that insane with no rules. It was just completely ridiculous and and silly, um, I was like, I want to do a whole movie of this next. I want to switch it up a little bit. I was going to ask, yeah, yeah, if there was any plans. Well, that explains that you're going to do yeah, a movie, I mean, I separate love... trailers and just kind of having fun with it. Yeah, I want to do something that's Kentu like Kentucky Fried Movie, but something that's just yeah. totally silly. You know, I watch movies like Jackass and Borat, and I, I love those films, and I definitely have that side to me that I've held back and haven't really gone for yet. 
So I think that, you know, whenever I make a horror film, I want to be starving to do it and so excited and hungry. And I've just done two horror movies back to back, so I just need to switch up and use a different side of my brain. And then when I go to do cell, really be like starving to do something scary. So this would be more or less like a sort of a, not silly, but this is going to be a, oh, a little more lighthearted, really but no, still this, very gory. No, trailer trash would be ridiculous. That's it's, great. It's just completely absurd. I want to make like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Absolutely. Level. A movie where it's just completely ridiculous and over the top and, and fun. But still connected to the horror genre. No. Not trailer at all. Not at all. Oh, Trash just, has just. nothing to do with horror. Oh, okay. I understand. Period. Okay. It's, well, it's that's good to know. It's a complete separate movie. It's a comedy. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Um, let's see here. Uh, wondering what your feelings are on your rapid cult status. Um, you kind of came out of nowhere, and you, you I, I can honestly say that I think you're up there with the likes of John Carpenter, Wes Craven. Thank you. I mean, I, I think, you know, for me. I've been at it, you know, working on movie sets, going for this since I was 18 years old. I mean, I started shooting films when I was eight and making movies, you know, little videos and super eight films with my brothers. It's all I did growing yeah. up and through high school and working on, you know, professional sets since I was 18, nonstop. So it's funny how it's, you know, for everyone else, it's like, oh, it came out of nowhere. But for me, this is all I've ever worked towards my whole life. Um, I'm just really happy that I feel like I've made an impact in horror. I mean, that was all I wanted was to... You know, I didn't necessarily come in and the goal was never to come in and just try and take over and change what it was just to come in and make a difference. Yeah. And, you know, I felt very strongly that there was a certain type of horror that I missed that wasn't being made. And it's really, really great to feel like in some way I've been a part of bringing that type of horror back. And Absolutely. I think that it's a lot of people, you know, it's Rob Zombie and the yeah. guys. I mean, it's a, a lot of people, Neil Marshall. I mean, everybody's done their part, but it's really exciting to be part of this wave. I think and, you especially, though, have, have kind of you know, been at the top of the heap as far as the new breed. Do you feel yeah. like you've, you've achieved, and I'm not going to say you've achieved all that you want yeah. no, in, in mean, a horror I want it for still me, striving. When I was younger, you, I went to, I rented horror movies by director. I mean, the yeah. director yeah. was it. And that for me, and you know, when I was in film school, Tarantino and Rodriguez broke. And I said, I identify with those guys. That's yeah. exactly what I want to do. And, you know, there weren't a lot of directors putting as much into the, into their audio commentaries. I mean, nobody was doing four or five commentaries on a DVD, doing so much in the behind the scenes stuff. You know, a lot of the stuff is really kind of prepackaged. Mm -hmm. And you could tell that the directors didn't really care about the movies there, like about being part of the horror. They were a lot of directors before me you felt they were using the horror genre as a stepping stone to get to somewhere else. It didn't they were matter more to them. detached from it. So I come from the convention world. I mean I'm the guy at every Fangoria convention and the comic convention. I mean that's that's where I grew up and that's where I'm most comfortable. So yeah. You know, when I'm making these DVDs, I'm basically making it as the ultimate fanboy who gets to live out the chance to do it. And and it, honestly, when I'm on set, I'm shooting every day like it's the last day I'm ever behind a camera. And I just try to, like, on all, all of my DVDs, on Cabin Fever, Hostel, yeah. Hostel 2, Hostel 2 Blu-ray, literally, I completely, 100% maximized all the memory on the DVD. That's great. Completely filled it up. I and noticed. that's what I wish everyone would do. And I don't, you know, people go, oh, how can you have all these commentaries? And I go, well, how can you not? I mean, the, the goal with my DVDs, I don't want people to sit and... You're not supposed to digest it all in one sitting. You know, if I watch a DVD and I see all the special features and I'm done in, like, an hour, I don't know, I feel ripped off. I'd yeah. rather have a DVD that you can own for 10 years and keep revisiting every now and then and always get something new out of it. It's, it makes it worth your while to, to yeah. go and get the DVD to have yeah, something. Yeah, you have it. And you can, like, you know, you, don't, you shouldn't watch all those commentaries at once. You shouldn't watch all those features at once. You should watch it as you're interested in seeing that stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Well, that's good. That's so. good to hear. Um, kind of taking it back to the we were talking. You mentioned earlier the uh, Rob Zombie remake mm -hmm. of Halloween. I know a lot of the big studios are kind of pushing this uh, remake. Is there an ideal horror movie that you would like to remake? Maybe it's already been remade or not. Would in yeah, your mind is that something that's just? I'm not really interested in remakes. There was a period where I was going to remake Dead of Night, I was going to remake Bad Seed, I, and I still think they could be great remakes. It's yeah, just yeah. I kind of got into writing my own ideas. You know, Cell was probably the closest I was going to come just because it's an adaptation, but it's Stephen Absolutely. King and he's my favorite writer, so I've always wanted to do that. Um, but, you know, as far as remakes, look, John Carpenter's The Thing is one of my favorite movies, and I love Philip Kaufman's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and I think if you can you can do that if you have a great take on a subject. You can, you know, I've, you know, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, which yeah. got us 300. You know, so I, 
I think that you can you can make a remake and make it great. I just just not something I personally am that interested in right now. I might feel differently in a few years. Yeah. Are you three years ago? Three that... years ago, mm -hmm. I was excited about doing a remake, and yeah. now I have no interest in it. Would you say you're of the school of thought that maybe they're better off unremade or or just kind of left better off where they were initially? I am of the school of thought. Or does it depend? It just depends on who the filmmaker is. If you can make a great movie, make a great movie. Awesome. You know, because if you banned all remakes, you wouldn't have John Carpenter's The Thing, which I think is the best you know, horror film of all time. I mean, there could be someone who says, I want to remake The Exorcist. But if they have a great way to do it, do it. Yeah. I can't wait to see Rob Zombie's Halloween. He's such an interesting, creative guy that I'm like, my wow, God, I'd love to see what his version of that movie is. Good. Good answer. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, man. My pleasure. Enjoy the rest of Comic-Con here. I shall. All right. You as well. Thanks.